Well, hey guys, so today we're going to go from something like this to something like this. Hey there YouTube, welcome back to the channel. I'm Adam, glad you stopped by. And today's video is gonna be kind of a, not a tutorial, but you know, a how Adam did something video. So recently we put out the video of the Mutz Cuts van. Uh, so I hope you guys watch that one. If not, we'll put that, you know, here or here, or, I don't know, somewhere on the screen. And you can go back and watch that one. But this is gonna be basically a how I did it not necessarily a how-to video because, you know, I just made a bunch of crap up as I was going along. So I wouldn't necessarily say this is a how-to. But anyway, we bought the Black Edition lunchbox um, for this, mainly because it was the one that was in stock. Um, so, you know, I took the Black Edition body and, you know, ruined it by, you know, screwing it up and then painting it gunmetal. Um, so we still have the Black Edition rims for the lunchbox body here. So all you gotta do is pop this off, change out the wheels and tires, and we now have a Black Edition lunchbox. Um, but for this one, I ordered a separate set of wheels and tires, and I just got the cheap yellow rims and tires off of Tower Hobbies. Um, no need to get any, the black wheels because I was painting them anyway to get them that rusty kind of steel wheel look. Um, so it doesn't really matter what color your wheels start with. Um, I just primed them, painted them flat black, and then did some, you know, blotchiness. Um, I, I wouldn't say it's dry brushing. Uh, essentially what I did is I ripped up a tiny sponge and just got uh, rust color, brown color, and a really dark, dark gray color and just started, you know, blotting it around the inside of the wheels once I got the flat black on there. And it, you kind of do it until you get the desired look. Um, now, when I was doing it, obviously I was inside, you know, underneath of a bright light, and I probably could have added a little bit more rust. The cool thing is, is it's paint, and I can add more if I want to. So I may go back and add a little bit more of the gray and the rust color in there just to make them pop a little bit more, because right now they just kind of look black um, until you actually get in close and look at them. So wheels and tires, easy. Um, the body is where it got really confusing. Um, one thing, it's hard to notice, but the front end of this is actually much longer than the front end of this. Now this does not have the bumper underneath of it. I took all the chrome pieces, so the bumper, the pipes, the rear bumper, all of that out of the Black Edition kit and mounted to this body. So this body has no bumpers, no pipes, no nothing. Um, because I was reusing that bumper, you know, there's nothing there. So what I did is I went, I've got a, a little woodworking shop downstairs, and I found a piece of pine wood and, you know, cut it to fit, and then started shaping it to match kind of the front end of the van. So it sticks out to, you know, probably three quarters of an inch past the front of this van. So where, you know, it basically matches the full depth of this. So basically we added a piece of wood in here and then just continued sloping it down. So once we got it in place, I went through and I filled it with a little bit of E6000. One, to give it some structure, uh, because you only got a, a screw down here on each side and then the two screws up here holding it on. Not much strength. And I knew I was going to run this without a bumper on it. So if for some reason he does bump his little nose, um, I wanted it to not just snap his face off. So I ran around the whole outside with some E6000, uh, let that dry, ran around the inside, did the same thing. So that gave it a really, really firm... Um, solid attachment point beside the mechanical fasteners of the screws. 
And then once the inside was dry, I came back and I feathered on another coat to kind of give it a nice gradual slope. Once we got the basic shape of that done, uh, we I noticed in all the pictures online, the top part of the face looks like it was added on after they kind of covered the rest of the van with carpet. So I did that by using a really big piece of Lexan. And this Lexan was left over from, I think it was a, um, a T-Max body that I'd cut out years ago. I just kept a big scrap of Lexan because it was super thick, um, like almost a 16th of an inch thick in, in some spots. It was, it was heavy duty. But anyway, um, I cut that to the general shape so it would wrap around and then we started heating it up and that was painful i'll be honest with you i was using a heat gun and i had to go get gloves because i was burning my fingers trying to bend it um and the bad thing with lexan is there's a fine line between uh solid and liquid <laughs> so you kind of have to play with it a little bit and test it and keep heating it up and keep testing it and keep heating it up and basically once you get it to the point it will bend fairly easily stop don't put any more heat on there because after that it gets gooey and stretchy and messy and um, really hard to control so I heated that up bent it over this way cut out some reliefs and then did the same thing and bent the edges over and cut out some reliefs and we skinned that piece with the fur so there's actually one layer of fur on that nose piece, and then there's a second layer of fur on the body itself. Now, the way I attached the fur was um, just Gorilla Spray Adhesive. Um, there, it's, I didn't know of any other good way of attaching it. Um, and the fur is something I bought at my local um, Hobby Lobby. Uh, I guess that you make teddy bears out of it or something. Um, I guess it could be like the inner liner to like one of those Sherpa blanket type things. But anyway, um, it, it looked like the, the Mutz Cuts van, so that's what we went with. And it was a really, really thin material, so it would bend over the corners really well, so it didn't have a really thick backer on it. Um, so we covered this, and I'd covered the body previously. So the body was a little tricky because I wanted to keep it as much of one piece of cloth as possible. So I cut a piece of the fur fabric that would cover the entire van, including this front and the back. Um, went down, sprayed the entire body. Now the windshield is not in here. Don't put the windshield in. Put the windshield in after you get all of the fur and all the attachments and stuff done. Um, so all we had was the body and the front wooden piece shaped and finished the way we wanted it. Um, sprayed it all with the spray glue and then sprayed the fabric with the spray glue and what you want to do is let that basically dry up and tack up on each part uh, you don't necessarily want to put it together wet uh, so we let that tack up and what I did was I put the body in the middle of the bench and then I had shoe boxes on all four sides of it which is about the same height as the body and what that allowed me to do was drape it over top and get it stuck down to the roof of the van first and then I could take one side one box off the side and run it down one side and I left the front and the back with the shoe boxes kind of going long ways to keep the front and the back from sticking accidentally so I did the front side or the, the top left side right side and then I made some relief cuts down this edge and down this front edge here and once all that was set then I pulled the back part off folded the back over pulled the front off folded the front over got it all pushed down nice and tight and when I sprayed the spray glue I made sure to go up underneath this edge I don't know about an inch or so that way if I had any leftover um, fabric I could then cut it to you know an, about an inch wide all the way around the van and then flip it over and tuck it up underneath that way it, the fur doesn't stop right there at that bottom edge it actually rolls all the way up underneath now the wheel wells you basically have to cut out a little bit tighter and then make some relief cuts 
around the wheel well so you just snip 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 and then roll it up underneath there because if you try to roll it obviously on the curve it's not going to want to tuck up uh, so we got the body wrapped in the fur and then all I did was take a hobby knife from the inside and cut out the windows and cut out the sunroof so before I mounted the fur one thing I did was down the side of the van there's a big molding line and the ring gutter at the top of the van. Um, what I did is I actually removed that on both sides. I removed the door handles to make the van as flat as possible so I didn't have to worry about, you know, going over lumps and bumps and ridges and stuff and not having areas to stick. Now, I don't think you need to do that. Um, maybe the rain gutter at most. This down here, I wouldn't worry about that. And the you're not going to see the um, door pulls, the door handles at all, so you can pretty much delete those too. So before we do the fur, we had to make the tail because the tail gets mounted to the truck before it gets skinned. As I didn't want any visible fasteners from there because with like the ears and stuff, the fasteners are underneath of the ears, um, so they kind of fold over and hide them. The tail, I didn't have any good way of mounting the tail to the truck without fastening it down and you know possibly seeing the fasteners so i made a cardboard template of his tail traced it out on the lexan and i made two pieces and i extended the bottom piece out about an inch or so and that way what that allowed me to do was bend the tail right here at the bottom of my template and that gives you a nice little 90 degree flange and the reason i did two was because i wanted to have a flange on each side Ooh, fancy um, so there's a, a flange coming down and mounting the tail down on both sides. And all I did was glue the two halves together with some E6000, let it set overnight, and then we had a very nice rigid, I mean, you can pick this guy up by his tail without worrying about it. Um, so the two halves are glued together. It's actually glued down with a little bit of E6000 and then two screws on each side. So, you know, the tail, I made sure, is not coming off of this van. Um, we did the same thing with his feet. Uh, I made little Lexan templates to the inside because and I needed his, his legs to have some, you know, structure to them. So, you know, while it's driving, it's just not flailing about back here. It'll stay kind of in that position. Now the ears, obviously you want the ears nice and floppy. So they're just two halves of the um, fabric sewn together. Uh, so, to make the ears, we made templates of those. Um, I don't know where those cardboard templates went. Uh, I think they're inside. Made two big cardboard templates of the ears and allowed for some extra to mount the ear down to the top of the cab. So basically what happens <clears throat> is there is a small thin strip of Lexan with two holes in it. And the screws go down through that Lexan, through the ear, through the body and are bolted through. So what that does is it captures this entire ear underneath of that Lexan and acts like a giant um, compression point. So the ears themselves are actually all stuck down to the body and you know it should not come off. They're, they're bolted down. The only way it's going to get is if it just literally gets ripped off and it tears the fabric. Uh, but we made the two templates, trace it out. So when you do this, because I almost screwed up. You can't make a template and trace it the same way four times. You actually have to do two lefts and two rights. So trace your template on you know side A twice and then flip it over and do side B twice. That way when you put them together they match this way because I cut one out and went to stick it together and the two pieces weren't lining up and it was kind of twisting the ear. So make sure you flip that pattern because you're not gonna draw it perfectly symmetrical. Um, so for the ears, we just, you flip them inside out and I just started down one side and ran all the way around the ear um, and just hand sewed it. Um, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I just made it up and it seems to be holding up fine. Um, just make sure when you start it, you got a good knot in it. When you end it, you got a good knot in it. Um, but really, there's no need to sew the very top of the ear closed. Um, I did. You don't really have to. But obviously, when you're sewing it from the 
inside out, you sew all the way around the ear, stop, flip it inside out, and then you can finish sewing the very top of the ear where it's mounting um, closed if you want. Um, I kind of wish I'd put some of the little plastic, you know, beads or something in here to weight them down a little bit because I'm pretty sure when they're driving around, this thing's going to look more like a bunny rabbit with his ears flipped up here all the time. But, you know, they're floppy. They're supposed to be floppy. The legs we had to do a little bit differently. Um, we made the, cart, uh, the template out of cardboard, cut those out of Lexan as well. Now, there was no way I was going to be able to stuff this into a sewn together leg or a sewn together foot area. Um, well, I, I, I don't, again, I don't know what I'm doing about sewing. So what I did was I cut out two exact pieces of Lexan just like this. And then we just went downstairs, sprayed it with the glue on both sides. And then I sprayed a piece of fabric big enough to cover both sides of this, plus give me about an inch of extra up here. Um, so tip on that is when you do that, take a Sharpie or something and mark the inside of the fabric and give you a center line. So when you go down and put this, now that it has glue on it, you can put that right down on that center line and then fold one half up, get it smushed on, and then fold the other half over and get it smushed flat. And, you know, you, you have a nice flat edge on the bottom and it's not, you know, cattywampus at all. Um, and then we attached it basically the exact same way we did with the ears. Um, there's a piece of Lexan underneath here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's just a piece of Lexan with two bolts going through it. And putting the holes in the body, you can't really do until you have it all wrapped. Now, I guess you could go through and before you wrap the body, you know, lay out the ears, get, get everything mounted and pull it all off. And then when you get the fabric wrapped, you know, just cut through the little holes and push everything in there. Um, yeah, I didn't think that far ahead. So I actually had to drill the holes with the fur on the body. Let me tell you, that is a pain in the butt because the fur just wants to wrap right around the drill bit. So you literally have to, you know, be a little tiny uh, monkey and sit there and pick the fibers apart to where you get a nice little seam in the fabric and, um, to where you can actually make a part in the fur and then drill your holes. So all I did was just parted, found out roughly where on the body this lined up, parted the fur, put my template on, marked the two spots in there with the Sharpie, drilled the hole, and then, you know, we were able to get all the screws and everything mounted in there. Um, I kind of wish they sat perfectly flat, and I'm sure they'll sit a little bit flatter once everything gets stretched out. Um, but, you know, once we got... Oh, I forgot. And when you go to cut this out, um, I just used a pair of shears, you know, like little kitchen hobby shears or whatever, and just went around it and cut right beside the um, Lexan and just leave that top piece sticking up, you know, your extra inch or so of fabric that allows you to make this hinge here so it clamps down to the body and it lets it fold over. Um, the nose I ordered off of Amazon. Uh, they were just, you know, puppy dog, teddy bear noses. Um, the intent of that overlay was to give it the mouth area. Um, it kind of did and it kind of didn't. So I actually had to take a little bit of brown uh, Crayola magic marker and highlight those areas. Uh, you probably use Sharpie. I just had a brown uh, magic marker around here. And then I put the little, you know, kind of spots on his cheeks uh, or for around his muzzle for, I guess, where his uh, uh, whiskers come out. And then the tongue, um, I needed something, and I didn't want to go all the way into town and find a piece of felt to cut up this tiny little chunk of felt for a tongue. So I went downstairs in the garage and started rummaging around, and I found an old battery that had a rubber, um, a red rubber boot on it to, you know, protect it from uh, shorting out. Uh, battery's been dead, been dead for a while, just sitting down there waiting to get recycled. So I cleaned that up and it made a really nice shiny red tongue. So I just took some scissors, cut it out in a tongue shape, and literally just pried up that piece of Lexan and shoved the tongue up in there. So the tongue is actually, you know, an inch and a half long or whatever. I just shoved it up in there and then pulled it out to where it looked um, appropriate. I could pull it down a little bit more, but I figured I didn't want it hanging down below the body too much. 
Um, and just I just put a little black Sharpie line on there to make the middle of the tongue, and that's the way it went. Um, what else? So this isn't necessarily something you need to do. Um, I just didn't know how well the fur was going to cover in every area. And, you know, if for some reason a seam opened up or something, I didn't want to show the, you know, uh, the white body that this uh, came on. So I did spray it with TS-68, which is wooden deck tan, which is kind of the closest from memory that I could tell in the hobby shop what color the the fur was. So I did spray that all the way around. Really the only place you can see it is the um, the window uh, piece right there. But other than that, you know, the fur covers up all the joints really, really well. And you can kind of, you know, move it and brush it to make sure it hides everything really well. Um, the Mutz Cuts um, signs, I found an image of that. And um, imported it into Corel. Uh, photo something or another. I don't know. It's software I, I've got on the computer that I got um, a while back. And, you know, I touched it up. And well, I did, one thing I did do with it is it reads Mutz Cuts both on the same side in the same direction. So on the van, the dog tag, you know, loop goes forward on both sides and it says Mutt Cuts. Well, when you get the image, it only set it in one direction. So I actually had to, like, flip it and mess with it and cut it and paste it and all that stuff. So that did take a little while to get those done. <clears throat> so once I got the stickers done, I printed them out in, you know, I mean, five or six different sizes to make sure I could find a size that I liked the best. And this is the one we went with. But once I found the size I wanted, I, I, what I did is I printed um, six. No. So I printed four of each sticker. That way I had two good ones to transfer on here. And then I used two of them as templates to cut them out. So all I did was just stick the sticker right onto the plexiglass, went downstairs, cut it out, you know, Dremel and some sandpaper and everything, got it to the right dimensions for the thing. And then I drilled a hole, two holes in there and countersunk them so I could put, you know, the, the um, taper top screws in there. And those are what's holding it on, so it's screwed through the body. And then I put the stickers on it after, so I peeled the, the ones I had on there off and because they were damaged from all the stuff and putting two screw holes through them. So peeled that sticker off, mounted the plates to the van, just kind of brushed the fur back out of the way and then stuck those new stickers right on top. Uh, that worked out really, really good. It looks like they're just little wooden signs or something on there. Um, but it was a little tedious. Uh, everything about this was a little tedious. Um, but it was super, super fun, and, you know, once I had the idea of making, you know, the, the mystery machine, um, I also wanted to do this, and I really didn't know which one I wanted to do more, so my wife was wonderful enough to get me two lunch boxes so I could make two. So now I will have the yellow lunch box all the time, I will have the mystery machine lunch box all the time, I will have Mutz Cuts lunchbox with the option of running it with the not black edition, black edition body and wheels. So, um, you know, this one, I know for you guys, the shell queens suck. Um, unfortunately, this one probably is going to spend a lot of its life on the shelf. Um, this one has way, way, way much too, time, too much time, energy, and effort into getting it right and looking good to go out there and get muddy and nasty and dirty and tear it all up. I will run it, don't get me wrong, I will run it, but again, without the front bumper on there, I don't wanna, you know, bash his face in. Uh, I don't wanna get the, dirt, the fur all nasty and matted up and everything. Now, granted, in the movie, it's not the most pristine looking van, so a little bit of funk and grunge on here will probably, you know, enhance it a little bit, but, um, yeah, this was a, a, ch a self-challenge. I wanted to see, you know, could we make a monster Mutz Cuts van? Yes, we can. <laughs> All right, guys. If you guys have any questions about anything else, um, the, the lunchbox itself is bone stock. Um, there's nothing modified or anything there. Um, you know, I don't expect this one to do wheelies. Now, it should turn pretty well because it has a good deal of extra weight on the front end uh, to kind of keep that nose down. So it should... Um, under power be able to turn a little bit better than a typical one. 
Uh, but again, I'm not going to be out there bashing this one around. This one's just going to be able to, uh, to laugh and giggle at as, as it, it flops around and uh, its little ears wag about. But guys, again, if you have any questions, drop them down in the comments. I'll be more than happy to answer anything I can. Um, I hope all the little pictures uh, going through here helped put a visualization of what I was sputtering and trying to explain. Uh, but, you know, I, I hope to do a couple more uh, things. Uh, I probably won't do the 18 van. Um, I know it's been recommended. Um, but, you know, I don't, one, I don't need that many lunch boxes. Technically, I could buy another body set and everything. But, you know, by the time you get the body set, and the, 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 the whole body set's gonna run like 60, 70 bucks, usually on eBay. Um, you know, by the time I buy all the paints, the body set, uh, make any of the decals and, and stuff for it, you know, I, I'm, I'm gonna be into that for, you know, 100 bucks. And for 100 bucks, I could probably buy a new kit and, and have another one in the collection. So that one just seems, you know, it's, it's cool. You know, if for some reason I could come across a cool Mr. T figurine um, or something to put in there as a driver, you know, maybe cut out the window or something and have him, like, throwing an arm out or something. Maybe. I don't know. It could happen. I doubt it. Um, but I do plan on doing some. I want to try a Mad Max build out of something. Um, I'll probably go with something like a Grasshopper 2 or something like that. You know, keep it on the, on the cheap end. Um, I really don't want to bastardize uh, and butcher up. Uh, an expensive kit to do something, so don't don't expect a Mad Max Cloud Buster, although that would be pretty cool to do the, the the monster truck from Mad Max. But yeah, I'm not I'm not butchering up my my Cloud Buster for that. Um, but you know, probably a Mad Max buggy. Um, I was even thinking about doing it with the holiday buggy. It just with the holiday buggy, it's so hard to paint the thing um, because the the plastic they have it molded in is not intended to be painted ever. Um, I know you can, but uh, we'll see. Uh, obviously, you know, Mad Max theme, if it comes out butt ugly, you know, it's kind of what it's supposed to look like. So maybe the Holiday Buggy, maybe the Grasshopper um, or Grasshopper 2. I think the Grasshopper 2 would probably lend itself to be a little bit better for the Mad Max theme than the original Grasshopper. Um, potentially even maybe the Fighting Buggy, something like that. I don't know. We'll see. But I do have, I do want to make uh, a Mad Max themed uh, buggy or truck or something. Um, but, you know, on these type of builds, I want to try to keep the cost down so I can still keep adding the collection with, you know, cool new kits that I don't have. Anyway, sorry about rambling on for so long, but, um, you know, I was really excited to build this. Um, I was really excited to share it with you guys. Um, so I hope everybody out there likes it. Uh, you guys out there, everybody be happy, be healthy, be safe, and I will catch you guys on the next episode. Bye. I grew up in a place where they told you what to chase, told you how to run the race. Every move was on the page, but I didn't like their way. Had to fight and misbehave. Had to find a way to change Had to leave to find my way Caught up in a daydream I beat my mind up there almost daily It's how I pass time, no opinions safely It's how I understand what I want in this place See, cause everybody wanna tell you bad things What could go wrong, what fame brings But success is a finicky thing And if you ain't sure, no, it'll never be I don't wanna let myself down Myself You won't understand it All alone, that's okay People like it, stand them They don't want me to change Keep me where I'm standing And I don't want to be where I am And I want something more Take a chance It could be possibly my last